to expats. What the fuck? Your spiritual guide through expatia. Disclaimer. In traces it may contain serious conversation. Hey guys, you are listening to Two Expats What The Fuck The Podcast. I am Kish Zoltan and here with me as always is Bogdan Rakshi. Hi Bogdan. Hi Zoli. As we promised last episode, we will talk about how being here in Expatia changed us. And we'll try to find some funny situations and we'll try to be as honest as, as possible. So we thought that we'd uh, purchase a bit of liquid courage to to try to be as honest as possible about ourselves and ob- about how we changed here. So now's the time. Bogdan, you can open it. Oh, yeah, shit. that's it. <laughs> <laughs> it went, it went run in my face. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yep, that's good. Great. Oh, shit. Hey, it's you nothing. fucking spat on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to um, clean up. It's good. Yeah. In my it's eye. Okay. <laughs> That's what she said. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, good. Nothing better than the sound of a cold beer being opened after a hard day's work. Yeah, and then there's nothing th- better than getting that beer into your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so, up to yeah, you where you uh, put it, but... <laughs> well, that's wait, good. Wait, wait. Uh, I have I have my beer glass here. Wait. You're welcome my to turn. open yours, man. Wait a second. Oh, yeah. shit, that sounds so good. Yours like sounded bottle. better, man. <laughs> <laughs> the sound anyway, of wait. opening beer. There's more. Can you hear that? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That well, whiskey that's, on the rocks. That's all you, my friend. That's all you. Whiskey <laughs> on the rocks. That's all you. I'm a beer fan myself. Although I don't live in Germany. <laughs> oh shit. So, where were we? Because I, yeah, I sort of got. We were trying to here. get an intro <laughs> up here. You know, we were we were trying to tell the people that today we're going to talk about stuff. Hmm. Oh, this is good. Yep. So today we'll talk about how our respective countries we moved to changed us. And uh, Bogdan, would you like to start? Tell us a story about how you've changed in the past (laughs) couple of years. Uh, Right now I'm like so blank in my head. I was just sitting and looking at my (laughs) beer glass and I was like, oh, this is good. I actually deserve this today. So (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) What, 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 what? What do you want me to say, man? Yeah, I don't know, man. Oh, sorry. Uh, I just want to apologize for any listeners who are listening to this at 7 or 6 a.m. in the morning on your way to work. Eh, sorry. Or not. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, they, they have, they, they'll have have their, their own uh, little time to... To savor this. Drink their beer or yeah. sip their whiskey. So, okay, then I'll start. Let's see if we can get the ball rolling. And as always, I'll start with one of your stories. What do you we... mean? <laughs> what I'll stories? S- I'll steal your stories, man. <laughs> okay, come on. So uh, let's see what what you what what happened. Yeah, you moved to Sweden. I think you were there for about a year or two when you visited visited home, and we were still there. We we lived lived in Romania still, and you got into my car because I picked you up from the airport, I believe. Yeah, and. You were so fucking annoying because you have to know that in Romania, especially in big cities, you have to be a bit aggressive when driving because otherwise you will not get anywhere. <laughs> and you were like so cocky and obnoxious <laughs> about it. But Zoli, why are you so nervous? Have you tried relaxing a bit? Why Why are you swearing so much? Now, why are why, you angry? Yeah, why are you angry? And I don't know if you know this, but that sort of made me even angrier. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I, I remember coming, like, it was the first time I came back to Romania in a while. And um, there were two, two things that I noticed. One was the air quality, which is obnoxiously stupid, bad. But the second one was when, I got, when we got in the car, everything was so goddamn fast and so aggressive now go come on it's green let move it yeah you have to like get around you it felt like 
it was such a fucking rush to to get somewhere that I don't know, like when it's the Black fucking Friday and people rush in the stores. It was like that. that <laughs> the traffic was exactly like that. You had to just rush and I don't know, felt uh, chaotic. That was yeah, yeah. But that when I think about it, what's stupid is that because we moved to to a small town in Sweden actually. Festivik, dude, it's about twenty thousand people, I think. There was like you could say the traffic was next to nothing. Like we had, I think, two traffic lights in the whole city, or maybe maybe three. And first thing is that there was not so much traffic in the beginning, and then the way traffic works in Sweden is so calm and so like I don't know, it's easy, you know, it's easy going. It's not, it's no no rush, no 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 adrenaline, no nothing. It's okay. It's like a walk in the park. Yeah, it's really, really, pretty laid back. And afterwards, you said that I'm too aggressive and I should calm down. I think it was the next day or the day after that you drove my car, and in an intersection, a lady tried to merge into traffic, but there was a bit of a traffic, so she couldn't do it instantly. And someone behind us just hung their horn and was being obnoxious and flashed their lights and so on. And you put the car in reverse <laughs> and tried to scare them. No, no. The thing is, I got, I got angry and it was quite fast. The, the change back to the old me that was used to driving in that way, aggressively and trying to, you know, uh, rush and stuff. I, I, get, I got back to that style of driving quite fast although i was still fighting the urge uh, to to try to drive nicely is just impossible like the it's just impossible the this, the traffic makes you a fucking monster at, you know? at home i was a, a, an extremely aggressive driver as well i was i had no patience I, if someone was an asshole i punished them it, it was my thing you know i, I would try to teach them <laughs> to, yeah, to be more lesson yeah yeah here I'm almost as laid back as you are driving. Yeah, well, well there's a, there's some differences in the Western world. I think the the that driving is not such a I don't know it's not such a such a stress a stressful moment in life. It's uh, much yeah. easier somehow. But I, I think it's my ma- mainly a cultural thing because if you if you think about it uh, in France, drivers are assholes also, but. Not at this, not, not in the same extent as in Romania, I would say, but because it's different. Like the aggressiveness in traffic is one thing, but when you also feel that the 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 drivers are uh, are aggressive to that extent that it's almost physical, you know, that's crazy. That's like, <sighs> yeah, that was one 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 thing that right now and I've what's been it's been like six years soon. Um, since we moved I think I would never I would probably go could get back to driving like that if I were to move that back to Romania but I think uh, I, I would never be as aggressive as I was before I would oh I would have learned something from my experience right now so yeah driving styles change that <laughs> that's for sure that that was a huge change for me as well and Another thing I've noticed is that I I sort of started planning for the future since I'm here. At home it was day by day, you know, get get by from paycheck to paycheck or from one day to another. And now it's it's a bit different. You start thinking about pension, you start thinking about holidays, you start thinking about putting some money aside and uh, and preparing for the future, yeah. which was such a you know when you saw these movies at home that uh, he is saving up for something and he is investing his money in X or Y. While we were at home, it was such a utopia. It was incomprehensible that I could ever reach that stage in my life or I would ever have the need to do that. Both that, the, the financial financial part is quite tricky because of course there were people that had more money than we had uh, in Romania and maybe maybe they did have some kind of a mentality like oh yeah put some money aside to buy something or something but in Romania well, the biggest thing that, that that annoyed me in in that when it comes to planning it's like you can't it's ne- next to impossible to plan something out 
because nothing ever goes ac according to plan. I know it's cliche. I know it's. Ev I know that everybody says that. Even the Swedes say that. That nothing ever goes to plan. Although I see it happening. It there. It's like the fucking plan unfolds as nicely as it could be. Yeah, sm small hiccups. It yeah, you could say nothing goes according to plan. But not in the same way. In Romania, if you want to try to plan something, everything goes to shit. Like. You want to plan, I don't know, moving somewhere. Well, you have to do all kinds of stuff. Uh, if you have to have some interactions with 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 like the the, the assistant administration, there you have to do, plan doing stuff with with them. If you have to go to get something at the city hall, you will never. If you can't book a time because there's no time booking system, you just have a fucking queue number when you get there. You don't know how big the queue is. You can't estimate how long it's gonna take you to 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 get your shit done. You know you can't actually plan anything because everything changes. And then I don't know. That, it's that so system fucked. I've uh, I've seen that that system makes you try to be more self reliant and yeah. uh, try to be more self-absorbed oh, as well i believe you have to be the one solving everything otherwise yeah. it's impossible to do something because you cannot trust that someone else is going to do something that they said they would do right oh yeah uh, and that's that's another thing that, that this fear of being uh, fooled or being ripped off is constant yeah it's it's starting to disappear from my mind at least but it's still there it's so engraved that yeah. each and every time i have to research for instance, I hire somebody to do something. I research extensively before giving them any money to be sure that they will not rip me off. Yeah, but the thing is, like, I do have that ingrained in my fucking DNA. Like, I always <laughs> think about that. Although I see the people, I see, like, I see... If I, if I were to go buy a car, right? I, since I've moved to Sweden, we ha we've had three different cars. And I think we're gonna change this one as well, um, probably in a couple of years. In Romania, I would have never done that anyway, because if you get one car and it's you know the car, it's reliable and it's easy. You you're afraid to change it because you might get some shit if you buy something secondhand that then somebody rips you off, right? Yeah, you know the 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 perfect uh, the perfect car with low miles, who was owned by a German doctor who used it only to go to church. Yeah, or German Germany is granny. filled. Yeah, Germany is filled with uh, retired doctors. Only, who, yeah, only yeah. retired doctors that are, who use their cars yeah. only to go to church on Sundays. Yeah, yeah, and groceries sometimes. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, but, maybe, but not really. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. In Romania, there is full of cars like that. With like, they're fucking fifteen years old and they've gone like fifty thousand kilometers. What the <laughs> fuck, man? There is no not such such thing. Especially a car in Germany. In car in Germany, it's like rarely. I think you see a, a, a car owner that drives at, at least probably twenty thousand. I think right a year. Yeah, that, that's at 15, least fifteen twenty thousand. I think yeah. it's like the minimum. So yeah, but I, I do have that. But right now, for example, when I was trying to explain the thing when I was when I bought my la my last car, right? I uh, I I switched from a car that was costing me a, a bit of a fortune, a fortune, I would say, compared to what this one costs. We, because we needed to save save money because we are planning to buy a house and we need to do, <laughs> do stuff in our planning, right? Yeah. <laughs> Talking about planning. And the <laughs> thing is, when I went to the car dealer, it's like a usual second-hand car dealer. It wasn't really like a, 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 what's it called? One of those Volkswagen or Mercedes dealerships. It was just like a normal car, second-hand car dealer, dealer you know? And I, I still had that little bit of ingrained doubt so that the, this guy is gonna fucking rip me off well of course they do do make money off selling cars in some ways or n another but here both the law and the people are, are are much more okay in general that you don't really get ripped off yeah, of course you pay more money for a car that you may you could have probably bought cheaper from a private person, right? But that's the deal, man. It's a dealership they, or or a second-hand car. No, yeah. what's it called? And that's market. that's what I like about uh, about Germany as well, because for instance, in Romania, if you had to buy a car, you would go with a friend who's a mechanic and you would check out the car and be sure that it's okay, and you do 
a trillion tests just to be sure that the car isn't fucked up in some way. Yeah, and you'd buy it and it's still fucked up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And after after a week it falls apart somehow. Mm. And I don't know how they do that. But here in Germany there's a law that protects normal people because the yeah. police or the, the politicians found out that not everyone's a mechanic. We do yeah. not all know our shit when it comes to cars. Yeah. So there's a law that if you buy your car from a dealership, it has to be at least a one-year warranty yeah, for that car. That's good. Uh, for bigger things, you know, if you puncture a tire, it's your shit. But yeah, for I... transmission, engine, and so on, there's a one-year warranty for that. And I've seen a lot of uh, ads that says that I am trying to sell my car, but only for export. That means that they do not want to do this one-year warranty. warranty yeah. They will send it to Romania. You know? <laughs> yeah, and uh, a lot of other countries, because there's a lot of uh, people, a lot of countries that buy actually from Germany. Germany, it's quite good with that. Even Swedes buy sometimes. Uh, very rarely actually but because the laws are not really so nice to to import cars you pay more taxes you pay more in in, in, in insurance and so on because of the fact that you don't have the, the car doesn't have a history in in sweden so they, they can't really check if everything is as it should be you know so it's more of a weird thing oh my god well i think there's some some i hear something I think is it's my neighbor drilling some fucking holes, man. What the fuck? Let's drink th- some beer for that. Yeah, great. Cheers. Cheers for him as well. Cheers, man. I yeah. don't know if he, if I hopefully it doesn't interfere with our. Yeah, I can't hear it. It's okay. Yeah. Um, or is I it just keep... like a mm, sound? <laughs> yeah, it could be. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully I'm still not. thinking how uh, how Germany changed me and in, uh, in these two years since I've been here. Yeah, funny story. First time I got half my paycheck mm-hmm. because I only worked two weeks after I got to Germany. I got here at the middle of the month. And when I saw my f- paycheck, I said, oh, shit, I need to learn how to handle money because I'm rich now. <laughs> you know, that was yeah, that was my and first you were getting impression. half your fucking and it was my money. half my and it was it was a minimal wage. So don't think that I came to some huge yeah. salary. It was minimal wage. And I started researching, I started reading books about personal finance and investing and so on, hmm. which I thought of it as a very snobbish thing to do. And when I told my parents, they laughed at me. <laughs> I said, "What what are you doing, man?" <laughs> Yeah, they, I mean, they couldn't the fuck understand. I feel it. okay with to do right. Yeah, yeah. I I, I kind of feel, feel that the the one of the one of the big parts in our in the change that we've went through is also the the economic side, right? The 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 stability you have here somehow it's you you actually feel that you feel that somehow you are safe economically speaking. You feel that there's a safety net around you. You know, there's so many people talking about the welfare states and shit like that. Yeah, it's it's true. The the fucking countries do have a very good welfare system put yeah. together that actually is meant to help the citizens not fall apart, right? It's made meant so they can pay their bills, they can live, right? Yeah. And of course, it has it has some drawbacks because naturally there are some people who take advantage of this. But I believe that the the initial thought for this was to encourage people to take risks, to start their own business, to to try something risky, knowing that there's this safety net that you won't end up on the streets if you're company goes bust you know yeah or, or or if you if you lose your job you can you can feel that you're safe and still have something to eat and somewhere to live although you've lost your job right you, you don't have to fucking commit suicide and which is quite common actually in many places in the world that people lose their jobs and then they fucking commit suicide because they don't have they, anything they believe else. it's the end of the world yeah yeah but that's that's really good that, that safety that you have is quite good and I, I was trying to say that the fucking thing with the economical uh, safety that gives you so much more freedom to explore and s- even like the taking risks right buying a car for 20,000 euros that's a huge sum for someone like me right and now it just feels normal it's it doesn't feel like a risk anymore it just feels that i bought 
uh, yeah, a, a, a car that is quite expensive in my view. Although, of course, there are cars that cost as much as you want, but you know what I mean. A car that, I, in my view, is expensive. I did buy it, but I don't feel like I'm gonna get ruined economically because I bought it. No, I felt I feel that, that I do have the safety to be able to buy something nice that I, that I like and feel good with. Oh, although, you know, right now, for example, I don't have a job. I'm studying mm -hmm. right now, and I, I don't feel unsafe. Even if I didn't have my my wife working, right? If uh, if I were alone, if I were to be alone, I, I'd still have some ways to make a living for myself, which is really cool. It gives you so much less stress and gives you the ability to be able to to focus on the right things, focus on your education or focus on your, I don't know, mental health or things that really, really matter. Yeah, exactly. And I believe that the safety gives you the time and the perspective to focus on the, on the important things. For instance, I've never in my life in Romania went to a doctor for a routine checkup or even a dentist, just to see if I'm okay. And I did that here, you know? I just went to the doctor and said, Hi, could you do a routine checkup, see if I'm okay? Because uh, if we are honest here, I'm over 100 kilos. And I thought that that might be a problem. And they did a blood test. It was perfectly normal and my, my health insurance covered it. I can go for routine checkups and the health insurance co covers it. Because the doctor said that the German health insurance company found out that for them it's much more rentable to do this, to give you a free checkup, than yeah. later on to cure your disease. Yeah, it's cheaper. It's definitely cheaper to prevent than to, than to treat. Yeah. That's uh, exactly what, hap what happens here, right? You have so much more preventive treatments to stop bigger expenses down the road, right? It's, of course, much cheaper to, to give someone $1,000 to take care of their, I don't know, their liver. I'm just saying, instead of paying for an operation later on, that might maybe cost $20,000, right? So in the long in the long run, not uh, not on an individual level, but on a society, a society level, for the economics of the of health uh, healthcare is uh, much better for the state. So that's why they're doing it. I think I think it is just the only reason. It must be economic. It's purely, I believe, it's purely economics, and as yeah. well as the focus on mental health that the Western countries have. At home, if I have um, I have an example here at one of the companies I had short bursts of a panic attack. At home, if I had that, it would have been taboo. I couldn't have done anything about it. I couldn't have said I couldn't have told my colleagues because they would say that either I'm an, an idiot, I'm mentally or crazy. ill, or yeah. crazy, or or just laughed at me that yeah you're an idiot. We all have that. <laughs> you know what's what's the big problem. And yeah, fuck I off. Grow up. Exactly, exactly. And here, uh, companies put uh, a greater importance on this because they know if it's a lot harder to find and train a new employee than to hold a, a good one, an old one. Yeah, I have, uh, I, have uh, I have some nice experiences with that. Actually, for me, when I when I started working, I was of course hesitant and had the, the mentality from uh, back in Romania that you have to work like a fucking, I don't know, machine as much as you can, as good as you can. There's no room for error. There's no room for doing less. You just have to work full full time, all time, 120%, right? Mm -hmm. But here, after a, while, I, after a while of working like that, of course, I had some issues and my boss actually noticed that my closest superior, right? He, he noticed that I'm not doing so well, that I'm not producing as much and that I don't talk as much with other people. And and he came to me and asked me if I feel right. And I was like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm just uh, maybe a bit tired, whatever. I don't know, I, whatever. And he said, no, I don't think you, you don't look as fine you you don't work as fine how about talking to someone you, what, what do you think about that no no i'm fine i'm good i'm okay i'm you know of course and he insisted and he sent me to the hr 
and uh, HR really well trained and and see these kind of things and they saw, told me hey look I see that you don't want to admit that you have issues or problems right now and we can see that you don't feel well we cannot help you directly but we have some resources that can and they they directed me to to a psychologist and they said they told me it's your choice you 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 are given the, the opportunity to go to a psychologist and see do some therapy the, the company is going to pay for it and just f- so so that you can feel better so you did you can come to work healthy mm-hmm. and that that was incredible for me i took the actually i had a, a bit of hesitation but i actually because my wife told me just take it and try it and see what happens Th- that's why i actually did it and i took it and i felt i actually did like i think two years therapy and the the, the company paid for it every time and that felt so good i felt mm-hmm. yeah that that's one of the things that i i actually would wish that would happen more in uh, Romania. There's so many people that need help. Yeah, the mentality at home is that everyone is re- replaceable, yeah. and if you do not like what's happening at this company, just oh, fuck off. On. Yeah, yeah fuck I can off. find ten other in your place, which is not exactly true because here in Germany I've uh, worked for uh, about a year and a half as a recruiter, and I can tell you that it's fucking hard finding people. Yeah finding employees and finding good employees that stay more than a week or two it's, it's impossible and i'm not talking about qualified yeah when you I when understand. you add qualified as well that's impossible yeah and i have to add uh, when i was working at my old job i, w- I was in the beginnings when i wasn't working like an office uh, job i was like in just a normal everyday worker Mm-hmm. Lowing low paid salary and not not a not not some special job. It was like nothing, you know, nothing like a special, like a, just a usual worker, right? But they they put so much focus on it, and that, that's good. And that that one is one of the things that actually changed me. If I we're we're, we're talking about change today, and I think the biggest thing that I can say happened to me somehow was. The fact that I got the space, I I I I received, I have this this necessary headspace and people around me, society gives me the space to change, gives me the, gives me the space to evolve, to no. to be better, you know, and that's because that's why I was able to change, if I'm to be honest. And the huge difference is that here life isn't about getting up after being knocked down yeah life here is about improving and growing and yeah. i'm not saying that you're not not knocked out or knocked down here as well but it's yeah. much rarer it's not on a daily basis it's not on a weekly basis and you have energy to grow you have energy to improve you have energy to dream fuck it and i think you have support man i i think you have yeah. su- the support you I, i always felt here that i have the support both from from everywhere like from my neighbors what's fucked up i don't talk i don't talk to my neighbors i don't talk to them i just say hey and that's it maybe you know but i you just feel it that when you talk to them so i'm something i did actually talk to one of my my neighbors like a couple of weeks ago and he said like yeah it's everything's everything's gonna be fine it's gonna be it's gonna be good you're gonna finish your studies and you're gonna get a nice job so don't worry about it it's fine Just do do what you're doing. You're doing fine, and it's fucked up because I don't talk to my neighbors, and I feel the support that they're giving me. That's weird, man. Because I've lived in Sweden as well, and I have to. Uh, uh, by the way, about change, how Sweden <laughs> fucking changed me. I considered myself an extremely antisocial man. I yeah. I still am in some ways. You you know me that yeah. I'm not a people person. I'm not the the life of the party. I'm somewhere in the corner drinking. That's that's. That's my spiel, you know. <laughs> that's that, that's yeah. who I am. And um, I was in Sweden, and I thought, oh great, uh, finally uh, a nation that leaves me alone, that doesn't want to talk to me, <laughs> that doesn't want to ask me things. And a bit of background story: I have a rescue dog with three legs. So fucking conversation starter, always, everywhere. Everyone wants to know what happened to my dog. Well, it was abused when when he was a, he was a pup. And we saved him, and now he's he's okay. He's he's 
doing perfectly. But everyone, and now everybody no. knows what happened to your dog. Yeah, exactly. And uh, <laughs> please don't ask me on the streets. It's okay. He's okay. <laughs> yeah, he's good. <laughs> and uh, I was so used to the, the fact that people are coming up to me and asking about the dog, which is normal. You, you don't see a three-legged dog daily. In Sweden, I was there for four months. No one, but no one asked me. Yeah. And we, we got to Germany and we were walking around and a kid just pointed at the dog and said, hey, mom, look, it, he has three legs. And I was so excited after four months, nobody asking me <laughs> about it. That I just went there and, and told the entire story. <laughs> and uh, oh and the kid's parents were just freaking out. Like, okay. What happened to you, man? What they were the like, fuck? okay, thank you, and, and, and ran away. <laughs> you know, they, okay, crazy person, crazy person, run. <laughs> Oh yeah, no. I, um, I think I like that in Sweden. Actually, uh, people don't mess in your business. They yeah, that's that they don't give a shit. It was a bit too much for me. You know this. Yeah, uh, this it's a, it's a, it's a huge change. It's a huge change. Actually. Yeah. But uh, they don't mess in your business. They don't give a shit. Not they don't. They, not that they don't give a shit, but they leave you to your stuff. If you want to do that, want to be that person, or you know, you have the space to do it. Yeah, somebody might think you're weird, but they're not gonna say it to you. They're mm -hmm. gonna be like, "You do your shit, you're fine, whatever." And then you be you. Uh, yeah, but but the thing it, it gave it gave me so much freedom and so much peace of mind. It was confusing at start uh, to to begin with. It was really confusing. Why do people not talk to me, right? But because I am a social person. I'm totally opposite to you. I am quite a social person. I love. I have no idea people. how we became friends. Honestly, <laughs> it's me. It's me. It's me. <laughs> you force yourself on me, man. <laughs> uh, you. I think you're all right now, right? You're happy. Yeah, uh, I'm. Uh, I'm no, better. No. I'm working on being more social, more outgoing. Hence the podcast. Yeah. I. Nice. I had four radio shows for a year. That was fucking horrible at the beginning. You know, talking for an hour about something, I don't talk to it to my girlfriend yeah, an hour. What? <laughs> you know what? No offense, my friend. I think you're trying to be social without being social. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's sort of an you escape. Know, like, I'm trying to talk to people, but I don't have to meet them, right? Yeah, that's a good part. I, I yeah. well, uh, this this may sound shitty, but this uh, this pandemic was at first I, I was okay. This is great. I don't have to meet people. People aren't breathing down my neck when I'm trying to do my groceries. And if they are, I can just say uh, Corona, fuck off. Put your mask on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put your mask on. Don't breathe on me. Just <laughs> get away. And the law helped me in this <laughs> manner. You yeah. know. But um, yeah. But how is it now? Do you miss actually having social life? Sometimes bit? I do. Yeah. yeah. I miss I miss the parties. I miss hanging out with friends, and that is not due to the pandemic. That's due to the fact that we are all over the globe. We were a pretty tight knit up group of friends, and everyone just exploded all over the place. Oh well, like a shit stain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, the good part is that when we are finally allowed to travel, I have friends in Canada, in uh, in Mexico. I have places to go, man. Yeah, I, I have a friend in Australia. She keeps um, calling us and she's, she's like, yeah, come here, come for Christmas. For Christmas is, is like 35 degrees. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Leave me alone. I want to see snow for Christmas, man. That would be so crazy. She said, I will go surfing. And, and well, Nah, thank you. I'm fine. I'm good. Leave me to the cold and loneliness of Sweden. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never mind. Yeah, but one thing that I wanted to talk to you about about what how how moving changed me. We touched a bit uh, on the fact that I was on uh, doing therapy and stuff, you know. Mm. But all of this like roller coaster that we've been through the past five, six years, soon to be six years, right? Uh, what? Cheers. Sorry, am I allowed to do that? <laughs> hey, it's our podcast. We do what the fuck we want. <laughs> Yeah, let's get let's get serious again. Wait, wait, I'll drink a bit. Wait. <laughs> yeah, shit, this is good. It's, I actually have Budweiser. I never actually drank Budweiser Budvar original Czech lager. 
log anyone on anyone from Budweiser listening you can pay us for this ad yeah free ad <laughs> uh, no not free ad no pay uh, pay that <laughs> <laughs> pay us pay us <laughs> shit okay well I'll stop doing uh, I, I'll stop promoting people without paying us it's not like we're like what's it called what's, what's the guy called Joe Rogan right he's probably getting paid for this shit yeah he's, he's getting paid to drink on, on his podcast I, I could and, and imagine smoke that weed, and smoke weed right <laughs> yeah what, what weed company paid him <laughs> <laughs> exactly he, he yeah. was talking to uh, his dealer hey hey put, put my phone number down in the description man <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah no but uh, seriously the, th- the, the biggest thing that I actually uh, feel that I, I that changed for me is because I, I did have all this space as I said all this like support uh, from everywhere and uh, and even from you guys from the, the you know from every from friends from family from from the society in general and i felt i wasn't judged as much as uh, as i was before it just gave me uh, so much place to space to to improve and now i feel like i'm such a more i'm much calmer i feel like a fucking zen buddhist you know <laughs> No, you're, I mean I, you're I, in a better I really place. yeah, I, I get that. I, I'm, I get that. I'm completely. in a better place. I and and when shit happens, I feel like I can I can have an easier time to understand mm-hmm. and process what's happening and get uh, get to solutions, you know. And I believe that this change in me as well. That I do not have to wear this facade anymore that I am infallible, nothing hurts me, nothing bothers me. Everything is perfect, although I'm dying inside. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I mean, uh, no, do, I do not have to. I do not have to act anymore. If I am feeling shitty, I can say that yeah, fuck off. I have a bad day, or I have some problems, or I'm not feeling up to it right now. And people just get it. You know, it's okay. No problem. We'll do it some other time. At home, they are like, "What do you mean you're not okay? What, what does what does that mean?" You know, it's it's sort of a. They always they always say like shit like get over it. It's fine. You're gonna be fine. Yeah, get tough over it out. It. Just come on, move on. The, we have this, to, this we machismo have to all the time that you have to have yeah, to put yeah, this yeah. shield yeah. up always. Generally, males, if I if I'm allowed to say so, right? Yeah. Generally, men have to have that like manly, macho, indestructible. You know fucking rock of the family you're the rock you're the one holding us together you're the man right you have to be the man have the balls and shit no it's that's that's just the and the, the paradox is bullshit, that man. since since i'm here and i admit it even to myself that hey i'm not perfect i'm not this macho whoever that everyone around me or society wants me to be i cannot yeah. be that I feel braver, you know, that yeah. by ad- admitting the this, paradox, that, hey, right? fuck off, I can do that. Leave me alone. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, I just uh, want to uh, crawl into bed and die. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Let me do it. <laughs> no, but I, I, I actually feel you. I, I get I get what you're saying because when I started also uh, opening up much more uh, about my feelings and the way I, uh, I see things and talking much more about how I feel how I feel, you know what I mean? Because I never used to do that. It wasn't in our vocabulary at home. No, what do you mean, no, how do you feel? How do you feel was meant to, are you drunk or not? No, <laughs> that it, was about the like extent if, of how do you feel. I were, if I were to start talking about how my feelings with my parents, they just fucking ignore me, man, they ignore me, that's crazy. Uh, and if I were to talk about my, my feelings with my friends in Romania, they'd just fucking laugh at me. So, of course, you're not gonna do that. Once no. you you feel you, if you do that and and they react that way, you feel ashamed. You feel like a fucking loser, right? And, and, and you, after a and, while, and you feel that something's wrong with you. And it's not that it's just perfectly normal that you have an off day. You have, yeah some sort of problem that you need to solve know that you are deeply deeply fucked up and it's only you because no one else will admit it around you and yeah, even although, though that although it's not you my friend it's the, yeah. all the fuckers around you that are telling you that it's not okay whatever oh, shut up just do it uh. tough it out you know? yeah. 
Yeah, tough it out. Why well, you're not jumping off that fucking bridge, man? You know, you pussy, you pussy, <laughs> come on. Oh shit, the fuck! You know what I mean? You, 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 yeah, you had yeah. the same, the same experiences as I had. Of course, uh, or I, most I was that guy. But fuck it, I, I was that guy. You know, if someone came to me back <laughs> home and was talking about their feelings, I, I would just clam up. What, what do you mean feelings? What, 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 what feelings? Go up, go away, go away. Drink water. Fuck, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, <literally. laughs> yeah, that's that's how we dealt with with our feelings back home. Just drank ourselves sh- shit faced and. Yeah, shit faced and forget. Yeah. Do and a, the maybe, reset like maybe, the, the computers, maybe. you know? <laughs> Factory yeah, reset and it was Yeah. In in Sweden it's called the Norwegian reset. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh great shit. No. But actually there is a saying in uh, here in Sweden, whenever you have to like plug something out of the wall so uh, you know, because it's there's like the last thing to do, the last resort, you just plug it off the plug it out of the wall you don't have any more mm-hmm. and it's called the Norwegian reset or if you, if you need to like get shit faced it's a Norwegian reset <laughs> no great great so shall we do a Norwegian reset till next week oh shit yeah I'm I'll gonna just... go grab me some more beers I think today <laughs> yeah cheers guys and it was great having you here and uh, don't forget to Tell us what do you want to hear about in our next uh, episode. Thank you, thank you for the the beer today, man. It felt it felt like you gave it to me. <laughs> oh, great! Although we are about 600, 700 kilometers apart, I believe. Yeah, I think you're so 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 wrong. I think yeah. it's more like one thousand six hundred. <laughs> you know what? Fuck it! I'll I'll Google it live. Yeah, uh, let's Google it, Google Maps. You are in. I will not say where you are because uh, uh, it's secret. It's a secret. No and offense, everybody. Knows. You might have stalkers, you know, because yeah, you're famous yeah. now, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I began to be famous like a, a couple of episodes ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see. So, come on, fucking German internet. Oh fuck me! You were right. Six hundred kilometers. Like no, that's w- I, I, I think I have. Wait a second. One thousand five hundred kilometers. <laughs> Oh yeah. Well, I, that I was just thinking like 600. I'm not sure I'm getting to Denmark in 600 kilometers. <laughs> I'm, ju- I'm just saying. <laughs> 1,511 kilometers, and, and, and yet, we have to take a ferry to to yeah. get to you. And, and yet we're still taking a beer together, man. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, guys, I'm thanking you for today. Zoli already did, but I'm thanking you for today. I'm gonna go grab some beers. Yeah, and see you guys next week. Yeah, bye. Bye.